Cool. Uh, awesome. Welcome all to uh, Edge's one year anniversary. Woo! Yes. Cheers, everybody. That's pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Seems like, uh, I don't know, it's it kind of strange. It seems like for me, it's, it's kind of like uh, both shorter and longer since it uh, was released since uh well we've been working with it for a, a, a longer time but also it it has been well it's it, the years gone uh, quite fast but uh everybody here uh if if you don't know the people i just want to start with uh me my i am uh, helgi bergenson and uh, i'm working in the core group of intersection with uh, milan and wolfgang and the gang and uh, with us here are, of course, our presidents, uh, Wolfgang Goebel and uh, Milan Gunther. And uh, additionally, we have with us a special guest in the form of uh, Eric Letart and uh, Jean Sebastian Daigle, who are uh, two of the power users of, of AG and uh, probably two of the people that have the most experience of, of actually using Atsi in practice with, with uh, enterprises out, uh, well, well, with enterprises. Um, it's, it's not going to be a really formal meeting, so it's primarily going to be just uh, a discussion where we're going to talk about the last year and, and, and what's been going on with Atsi and our experiences. So please, if you if you have questions, then uh, don't hesitate to uh, raise your hand or put them in the chat, and we will definitely come to them later. And uh, then uh, at the at the uh, a little bit later, we will also open for a general discussion and questions to for for everybody. So don't hesitate to jump in. Uh, but I want to start with a couple of questions to the precedents in the beginning. So I mean. It's one year ago. Uh, let's say it's March 29th. It's about five o'clock and you just finished your Go Live presentation. What was going through your heads? I think we were both relieved in a certain way yeah, that there was some excitement and some... Of course, we were excited and we did not actually we did not know what would happen. And then we sat in a nice Parisian cafe and then in a nice Parisian bar and just celebrated without really knowing what will going on. And just maybe watching curiously the numbers of views of the LinkedIn we, we presented in on LinkedIn Live. Okay, so how many views, how many people will attend the show and how many edgy downloads will we see? So I, I was watching the, the numbers. How is it going big? We will have millions of hits. No, we didn't have. So that was going on in my head. And and I think, so Milan, maybe it's differently for you. I did not have that many e expectations. It was just uh, a bit of stress and uh, that, that went away. It was a bit, we tried to unwind, I would say. Yeah, definitely. I think it was a special moment also because, uh, well, Wolfgang was in Paris visiting. And uh, I think um, doing this together in front of one screen was also something we, we don't get to do often. And I think we it was maybe the first time we did that <laughs> to be in the like in the same space. Uh, um because you know the um basically the the predecessor to intersection group, the architectural thinking association started pretty much as a virtual endeavor, right? It started with a lot of people being in Zoom. Um and so we were quite used to that. And uh Pulling this off, you know, okay, traveling, uh, being together in one space, um, um, doing, yeah, this this live show on LinkedIn Live. We had quite a lot of of uh, spectators. Um, I, I think it was like, yeah, I don't know. I, I want. I don't want to say stage fright, but <laughs> but we had like some. Uh, we were excited, you know, and uh, so um, when when it was over and we presented it and we got feedback and we, we got some people on LinkedIn saying, yeah, this is cool, this looks nice, this feels like something different than the traditional stuff and so on. I think we were like super happy, but we also, as Wolfgang said, we needed to um, go to a cafe around the corner and uh, have some wine and be like, okay, it's done, it's, it's out now. Um, and and uh, let's let's take it from here. 
And we managed to make LinkedIn Live work one minute before the broadcast has started. So we had some technology, like always, we've tested it, but it did not work on my, I can't remember, but the, the session, it was, of course, there was, we were super nervous in the beginning, but then I think it went super smoothly. Yeah, and then we just celebrated and what, I, I was watching the numbers. Yeah, I forgot about that. It's true. Like we had this tech hip hiccup and then we switched to to the other computer and oh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I didn't want to remember. Possibly the brain has a, has a way of forgetting things that are awkward or uncomfortable. So, yeah. But I mean, okay, you sat down in a cafe. You probably had expectations. What were you expecting to see for the first year? I mean, you must have thought at least a few months uh, I had, or, or if not a year. What were your ex expectations? What were you hoping to see? Well, to be honest, uh, I never did something like this before. So, um, and like, I, I think um, my expectation was mostly um, to like that, that we, we, we would see some use, you know, like this is, this was my hope basically, because, uh, you know, before I went through the, the process of publishing a book, uh, intersection right it came out in 2012 and back then I had expectations like whoa this will be um, a complete game changer and uh, everyone will buy it and then you know give uh, loads of money to my consultancy <laughs> and uh, you know uh, it will be amazing and that didn't happen right so uh, the book sold reasonably well the publisher was okay happy and uh i was also but you know it, it wasn't like this big thing and you know it's a it's a long book it's 500 pages long um and it's uh so you know so back then the, what i thought would happen wouldn't like didn't really really happen and so now when we released edgy we did a lot of things very differently it's it's not only a book it's open it's open source it's much shorter it's much more concise it's more of a system it's less of a uh you know like it's and it's made to be used and so my expectations were like oh i hope people will use it but a bit dampened from this previous experience you know and so um i think uh now one year later I can uh, say, like, I'm I'm actually surprised, not only how much people use what we put out, but how much people build on it, do their own things with it, you know, that we didn't expect and that we didn't, yeah, so, so talking about expectations, there are a lot of things happening that we didn't expect that are great. <laughs> yeah, my first expectation was about numbers. So will we get 1000 views of the launch videos? And we were close. I think we are close to 1000, which is okay. So check, yeah, we, that, that happened quite soon. And what will be the growth ratio of downloads? So maybe one important KPI, how many people go to an enterprise design and download the, the tools and the PDF and so on. And, and that's reasonable, but we haven't entered the, the, the hockey stick yet. Yeah, Would it go viral? Maybe we will have 1 million downloads in the first week. Um, I mean, that was way too high ex as an expectation. That was unrealistic. But I was not able to say, okay, will we have 1,000 in a year? Will we have 10,000 in a year? I mean, now we have around 800, which is okay which is maybe a bit below what I was hoping for. Um, but on the other hand, as Milan said, um, I was totally, totally surprised and, and deeply touched by the Edge User Day, for example, by pe where people like Jean Sebastian and others, and they are still keep keeping on building on that stuff and they are building things that it was not invented for. I mean, it's just the language, right? And now they add tools and tools and tools and it evolves. Um, it's a bit like our baby now, somebody uh, got it and and, uh, and and moved it away. But but that means also maybe for the future that we must deal with this situation. Yeah? It's no longer the work of two people, of three people maybe, with, together with Bart, four people with Annika. 
um, it start has started to be a true collaborative uh, community project. Um, and maybe that that that's stronger than expected. I've not expected to have so many tools and so much work by Jean Sebastian and Eric and others based on this language, what you can do with it. So that that's that was a surprise, yes. You mentioned a couple of things that have surprised you, especially then uh, the fact that people are actually not only using the tool, they're actually building on it. They're using it to build their own own things, uh, which, is, which is definitely pretty cool. Uh, but are there any specific milestones in the last year that uh, have surprised you or you are specifically proud of or, or, or something that has happened in the last year that say, we, this was cool. I'm really, th this was awesome. We now have a third person in our closer network who is super active. So we have some Helge from Sweden, so that um, who volunteers and spends a lot of time and energy. And I think our core got more, much stronger. So a lot, and there's a lot of work in this operational executive management to run an association and so on. And that is super helpful. I was not expecting it. Yeah. So still we are building up on voluntarily work, which is challenging at times. Um, so that's a major achievement. Maybe another thing is I did not expect that we get so much attention by the tool vendors. Yeah, we are mentioned twice in the Gartner Quadrant, Qualiver and Value Blue, and they come to us yeah, more than I've expected. Uh, I don't know why exactly the tool vendors are so curious. We don't get that many inquiries by enterprises or training companies. Yeah? I don't know exactly why, but I find this interesting. And of course, that has a potential yeah? that Qualiware has implemented them. And we have a deep relationship with them. We will, of course, uh, it will be fruitful, fruitful over time. So that's, I haven't expected it to, to have that many interest by the tool vendors. Hmm? Milan. Yeah, and um, uh, what Sebastian just said in the chat, <laughs> I think that surprised me, you know, mm -hmm. like um, there's a extremely strong and thriving and um, regular happening uh, intersection Montreal local community, um, which I think came about because, um, yeah, but what we said before, you know, like we have a very very strong use over there by our friends from and friends <laughs> who are here with us today and also by one point um and it's one of the larger consultancies right in the world uh, that also is in paris we just yesterday had our first uh intersection paris but it's interesting no that intersection paris where what one of the presidents live is one year behind <laughs> intersection montreal um and Seeing this adoption on the other side of the world, I think that's that's something that I um, did not expect. Okay, other side of the world. But now I'm also thinking, I think, of uh, New Zealand and Australia because so we have a lot of users from Canada. We have a lot of users from Australia and New Zealand, um, and together with Europe, basically these are the three big uh, localities or um, regions that that are adopting edgy right now. Um, and I think for me, a, a milestone was definitely to see how something global and virtual can tr transpose to something local. And now we are just, you know, basically stealing everything from them for Paris. We are just imitating everything they did. And that's great, you know, because <laughs> yeah. they found out what works. Yeah, maybe that's a beginning. So I expected it. So I was not surprised. So uh, so it, it, it's it's touching, of course, to see that and all that momentum coming from around the globe. And of course, if you want to ask me what, what's, what we want to see in the future, of course, we want to have an edgy community in all major cities of this planet. Yeah. So we want to become other communities. There are meetups around the world. Yeah. The domain driven design, Scrum any topics you have communities in and then that means okay we have two at least i mean that's not bad um of course we want to see more yeah? and and some people help us with community building like like helgi and alex and and so on so they uh that, that's a lot of work community building takes time and you must support the local community and again helgi thank you very much for the, for this work uh, what i've learned after this year it's really a lot of work to run an association to 
run the community around. It's no more about writing. So it was three years of writing in AG. And now after we've launched it, launched it, it was one year of keeping it up and running and spreading it and building the community, running meet, uh, running regular uh, meetings, doing accounting, doing so it's it's this we are becoming a everyday business without being a company and with volunteers, um, which is sometimes tiresome, challenging, but okay, it's a, a step in between um, not-for-profit, volunteer really, uh, committed to writing, to running a more and more professional organization. Maybe that's the challenge for the upcoming year. We must make the, the, the change um, to get more and more professional in our own enterprise design, in our own organizational design. We must have hired people. We must be able to make enough money to hire people. Yeah, we, I can't do that forever uh, together with a 40 hours job. And Milan, maybe it's also not a bad idea that some presidents at some day get some money out of it just to make their living and, and focus more on this work, but not only the presidents. Yeah, We need executive manager, we need administrative stuff and that we are building it up and it, it builds up that, that's cool but there's uh, still some one two years to go until we have this kind of professional level where we have enough income to fund uh, hired people that's where we want to go cool um i'm going to take a little bit of a side turn and and, and turn over to you uh, john sebastian eric um you had started using Etsy actually even for, before the launch, and you had started working with it. And uh, already at the Etsy User Day in Vienna in September, you presented a year of using Etsy, even uh, even though it was only about what seven months or so since the actual launch, uh, the formal launch. D did you feel any change in the relations of the official launch in in uh, when when we had the go live in March? Yeah, I'll take that one. Um... Yeah, for us it was like uh, when we first started, like before the launch, that was the there was the the beta phase where we're like we were reviewing, and like we've read everything and we need to I don't know just figure stuff out like what are they trying to do what how how does it actually work, and there was a lot of um, theory there. So what we did since we do a lot of workshop facilitation, we just like since it's a language map it over all, every every of our everything. Uh, Every uh, every workshop we do in our tools, and just to see how it uh, it works for the let's say three first month, and then one thing that was fascinating for us is just to see the um, all the little aha moments. Uh, they wrote that, but they understood something like a year ago or two year ago, and it kind of uh, rewired our brain. Uh, like every week that we were learning to using it. And I think since the for the beta phase and the the launch phase, uh, what changed is instead of trying to understand it, we switched uh, on a mode to uh, okay, we had all these haha moments, and how can we communicate that and make and involve people in it and enable them to have this same revelation that that we had. So for the beta, it was more understanding it and playing it. Uh, playing with it. And then it was more about uh, spreading the good word. And I think uh, if you, you can say hi, Matthew, uh, is one of the early uh, adopter afterward that we, we spoke about. And he, he basically had the same uh, uh, aha moment we had, but like in, in the same order, but three months or four months after us. And we still have these kind of moments uh, today where uh, just like during the last month, I think I figured out two new thing that are, I think with the model are super interesting. So it's it, the, the beta phase was very uh, enlightening. Uh, and then it's uh, all about communication and using it more and more and having more. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, nuance. Uh, stuff to do with edgy and going deeper with the clients and see all the little things that uh, are not uh, you cannot see or understand uh, if you don't use it actively. What well, what have you seen as the as the major challenges with with starting? What, what, is there anything specific that uh, you have done or had to overcome in order to start working with it, or has it been just a normal transition? Good question. 
Um, I would say that one of the main challenge was to get the courage to uh, use it on live clients. So getting out of the use case or just simulation and said, okay, this this client we 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 go we go we go strong or we go home. Uh, and of course we we choose carefully uh, which one we will work with uh, on the front stage with edgy uh, but we try and after maybe six months six months uh, out of our project we're in edgy but no not all the clients know that we were using it and we start to introduce it more slowly to them um other than that other than that is the 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 fact that as it's a new language people may be a bit uh you know reluctant or afraid to or they said oh not another new thing or something like that and we we had to to convince them that just take one hour two hours let let us try and and then they, they saw that it brings values it brings clarity and it also are is quite simple to 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 just begin with they, they don't have to learn all the the symbols and stuff but uh they, they they still start to implement the vocabulary uh, of of edgy and that was quite 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 you no know, uh, at the beginning just to say okay we we really uh need time from you as a, as a client as paying client to let us do a little experiment but you know after the first contact uh they they they, they really really enjoy the ride and I think it's a it's a self-imposed kind of issue uh, because I would say, uh, please, dear client, uh, can we try edgy uh, because it's good? Uh, yes, it's a new thing. But nowadays we just use it. We don't ask for permission. Yeah. So it was kind of a it was our us that were not that we didn't trust, but at some point we stopped ask for permission to do the best work we can and do the best work we can. As is way easier with edgy. It's not the only tools we're using, of course. It's a, it's a, an accumulation of tools from different background, from workshop, from UX, for architecture, identity, brand, and et cetera. But when we use it with edgy, without asking their permission, it, it just kind of work. Everything stick together and we can understand more what we're trying to solve and when there are some problem. Yes, uh, t totally true, Yes, It was a game changer to switch our mind. Like, we, we arrived at some point that we said, hey, when you are a plumber or an electrician, you don't choose him or her uh, because you use Makita instead of the wall or another brand of tool, right? So that's the same thing. You, you, you want to work with us as consultant? We bring the tool set. That's it for now. <laughs> I, I like that analogy. I mean, uh, just uh, it, it's just another tool in the tool belt, and and the customer really, it, it's it's not really that interesting for the customer what kind of tools we have, as long as you get the job done and uh, do it in a good way and a professional way. So I I, I really like that. How how has actually uh, affected your work? I mean, it, you you started using it a lot more, but I mean, has it changed the way you interact with customers in general? Or have you like gone all in? How what how about? I won't say 100%, but not far. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, we still do a lot of, a lot of workshops, but uh, the way that we structure them, the way that we create uh, reports or, uh, you know, uh, synthesize information and stuff like that is uh, very, uh, very edgy. <laughs> And um, it's also changed the conversation we have with clients. As one of the basic um, princip principle of, of edgy is that everything is connected, you know? So it, it gives us the ability to, uh, or the capability, <laughs> to have conversation on other facets or other elements that are not into the main project, just to say, don't only look at the symptoms of the problem, because as everything is kind of, of course, it have impacts on other uh, facets or elements. So uh, it's broadened our uh, field of impact over our client on most of the project we, we did in the last year. Yeah. 
Yeah, and it does bring a lot of nuances now when we plan our workshop. Uh, let's say as uh, my background is designer, so I'm used to uh, working with user journey, uh, which is the point of view of the user and what he's living. But most designers I've seen use that tool. They mix up, uh, is it like the actual journey? Is it the what we want? So is it a vision of what we expect? Or are these processes? And like just having that language, which are three uh, story uh, processes and journey, uh, which are all time related, but have nuances on the point of view, uh, just change the conversation when you do the, these workshop. Is it is it is it what you wish? Is it uh, what he's living? And just all these nuance uh, make for just better conversation between people. We're less um, I don't know. It's uh, it's less of a maze. We, we know where we are. It's easier to identify what we're talking about. It's easier to say no. This is another conversation. This is okay. So. So it's it's it also changed the way we we tackle this workshop and make sure uh, when we frame a problem we stay in that frame or we can identify if we need to go outside because we found out that um, it's not the product it might be the architecture part or the experience part or it, it or it can go back all the way to the organization so it of it, it really helped us like um, create better workshops that are more aligned quicker and just clearer as a whole. Oh, and uh, yeah, Eric, sorry. Oh, no, I would just add something uh, over what you just said, uh, GS. I think it helps us to see a bit in the future too, because as everything is connected, we can plan in advance what type of uh, question we want to ask or to say it just arrived last week. We, we, we have a client that we work on uh, maybe the, the, around the journey uh, in um, like a service blueprint kind of stuff. And we, we, we had this in mind that probably uh, it will impact the brand. And we know that they were working on the website. And we, we, we plan in advance some question and some answers <laughs> uh, because we, we, we know that it will, it will have a direct impact uh, when we start to dig in the, the the journeys it seems um how can i say it maybe seem a bit simplistic but um when you are into a meeting into a workshop sometimes you 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 just focus you know and uh edgy is a great tool to say okay uh what impact can we have or we will have to talk uh about uh in that in the the, the next meeting so uh, I, I think it's a great tool to 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 just plan a bit in advance what you will speak in in workshop or meetings. Cool. Um, I I want to remind you uh, everybody that's on on the call that uh, we we don't want to be too informal, no, too formal. So if you have a question or anything you want to ask uh, either uh, Eric or Jean Sebastian or Milan or Wolfgang, then don't hesitate to either put it in the chat or raise your hand but uh, i also want to ask you uh, the, the same question i asked milan and, and wolfgang uh, are there any if you look back over the last year are there any specific milestones or or something that uh, has happened that surprised you or you're specifically proud of uh for uh, eric and i yes <laughs> okay uh so many <laughs> uh we took note on that one uh, I think we, 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 okay. First one. And it's, uh, thanks to you, Elgi, the, the scan mm. was, uh, the lightning scan, uh, the tools that you, Elgi here, uh, develop and have developed is a series of questions to help you. Like, uh, we, we, we did a workshop with it. It's all our own take on Elgi's work. So it's kind of the community part where we build on top of, uh, what everybody's building, uh, We've done it a couple of times and it really sets the table for the jobs to be done on the coming month. Uh, usually people call us because they have an organizational problem or a product problem. And then we st when we start asking uh, all the questions, uh, it usually takes three hours and people say, yeah, but the problem is there, but it's uh, the outcome is what we're talking about. And then we can go all the way back to where the root cause is. And then 
it enables us to have the conversation where we're not allowed to go usually. Uh, for instance, uh, Eric and I have a strong digital uh, consultancy background and people call us for digital problem and websites and all the IT stuff. And usually we cannot say, okay, you have a problem with your product. Let's talk about your identity. We don't have the good expert. They don't want us to go there. You're not allowed to talk to X, Y, Z. But when you start with this conversation in a neutral way, now you say, okay, we're going to start there and then move to there and then move to there. And then you're going to be able to solve that problem uh, uh, at the end of all these uh, like workshops. So we're kind of able to retro-engineer and really understand and tackle the problem in, a, in the right way where we weren't allowed before without the model. And it's, it's it's kind of fun when you do the edgy scan and maybe the the all the the C level uh, directors uh, don't have the same answers and it create very deep conversation. But why did you say that everybody is aligned over the identity or the narrative, and the other directors say, "Oh no no, we are not totally not aligned" and stuff like that, and helps to see where is uh, where, to, where to start, as uh, Gia just said. But it's also kind of uh, in your face, uh, even when people really understand that they don't really talk enough or have the same direction. So the, the, scan, the scan was very, it, very appreciated. It's kind of the first step. It helped people acknowledge that there's a problem without us telling them there's a problem. So then they're the one asking us to help solve them. And not we're not saying this is where your problem is and we have to convince people. We just make it a conversation. Everybody acknowledge this, what we need to do. And then we're not selling uh, stuff to people anymore. They ask us for help. And then it's a way better conversation and uh and way better relation that we have with the client because it's not forced, it's not imposed. They understand that we understand, we understand that now they know and they're able to move forward with their problem solving. So there, it's less uh, challenging for us. Cool. Uh, Arnold, you posted a question in the uh, in the chat. Uh, I'm, I'm wondering if you just wanna jump in and, and, and ask it to Milan and, and, and Wolfgang. Uh, yes, uh, hello everybody. Um, yeah, I, I'm. I, I like all the definitions in um, in uh, in Edgy, and um, and I was thinking from okay, uh, the future is uh, more and more. Um, no, yeah, say climate uh, aspects uh, are becoming more and more important, and our design for products. Uh, probably need to incorporate this kind of uh, impact on no, yeah, on the climate or on the earth. And um, yeah, the question is then actually from, okay, are you planning actually then to, to describe also those kind of terms and that bring in into your edgy and that you can use it as on one side a kind of a governance tool and on the other side kind of as, an, as a part of the design mechanism. I happen to have had a, I think, 15 minutes or 20 minutes conversation about exactly that question yesterday uh, at our first Paris event. Oh. <laughs> um, so, uh, and, and you know, it, it has to do with the um, positioning of a GN enterprise design. And uh, in another conversation, actually, one, one um, very famous designer asked me, okay, who who comes to you and asks you for enterprise design? And the mm -hmm. reason is right. Uh, the, the the answer is right now not many, uh, because uh, that's not what companies or what enterprises ask for right now. They ask for selling more. They ask for being compliant. They ask for uh, I don't know, being innov like innovation. They ask for all sorts of things, but they don't mm -hmm. ask for this, right? And so, and I think the reason for that is that enterprise design and edgy is not really actually a question. It's, it's uh, you know, it's not, no one says, okay, how can I design this? It's more like, how can I be more successful? How can I be more compliant? How can I be, no, no, no. and then enterprise design is an answer, right? So it, it gives you a tool 
to think about a certain set of questions, a certain set of elements. And uh, long story, but uh, or long arc, but short, I think the whole topic of sustainability and governance is one of these questions that enterprises right now have. Mm -hmm. And edgy is one answer, like one tool that you can use, and there are many others to mm -hmm. um, to to uh, respond to it and to to get to some future state where maybe you are more sustainable, right? But um, so uh, we like we have currently uh, a few working groups looking deeper into certain uh, facets and certain elements. I'm pretty sure we will see soon working groups on the topic of sustainability, and they will showcase how to use edgy to reply or formulate a reply to such a challenge. But I don't think we will touch edgy itself to adopt language of, um, for example, common ESG tools, just because um, edgy is supposed to be a, a language to that is neutral of the challenge and is neutral of the um, of the enterprise that's using it. The term capability, the term task, the term product, you know, it makes sense for any enterprise in the world. And you can apply uh, this language when working on a sustainability challenge and to formulate, okay, if we want to be more sustainable or if we want to be more uh, socially responsible, this is what needs to change in the elements that make the enterprise, but the elements stay the same. So I don't think edgy will evolve into a sustainability toolkit, but we will see use cases of enterprises applying edgy to react to the sustainability challenge, if that makes sense. So why not think edgy as a platform where others can plug in their tools and ESG can be one tool and business model canvas and all kinds to be what we see. Today. Well, it's not really a tool. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, so I see or what we see edgy now, the language, we, it, it's very slim. So the documentation is slim and we have only four elements. Yeah, people performing activities to achieve outcomes using assets. That's it. And then we have the facets. Yeah. And the beauty in it is that every method, every enterprise design, organizational design, ESG, and whatever method always, always comes back to answering questions about those four elements because they are not more, no more than those four elements. So mm -hmm. it would mean if I could move it to ESG, the question is how can I use ESG to find the right capabilities, which is an outcome? Which outcomes do we want to, which assets do we need to? have this ESG standards and so on. So it's an add-on. Yeah? So think of it as a plug-in to the language. The language is just, if you want, like a platform, the connector between several tools. And there can be hundreds, of course, over time, thousands maybe. Eric? Yes, we have a, we have a use case about that. <laughs> yeah. I, I'll, I'll try to be quick. I'll be quick. Uh, last month of May, we've been asked by uh, Quebec University to um, uh, teach uh, some design thinking methods and stuff like that uh, for um, MBA uh, student C-level. Uh, the, the MBA was on the thematic of ESG, uh, exactly. And we decided to introduce EG to them as a, as a language to help them formulate ESG recommendation based on the UN 17 facet of ESG, uh, ESG. So as you said, Milans and Wolfgang, we, we use a, a tool specialized in ESG, the UN 17 facets, with EG, and it works It works a charm. Uh, honestly, it, in one week, it helped them to understand the impact of their uh, mm -hmm. recommendation, align them with the UN uh, facet, and to create EG sentences that explain uh, how uh, it should be implemented. So, uh, GS, do you want to show something or? Uh... Yeah, sure. It it's uh, the right. Uh, it's fast, uh, boop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me a sec. <laughs> Gotta go ahead. Here it is. Okay. It's just a a quick example here, but like the it's in French. So I'm gonna do the translation live, but. The outcome was here on the white uh, block there. It's a, a better R, uh, RSE. 
And the action was a recycling program, but you need some capabilities and you need some assets and you need someone in the organization that will have that capabilities. And then you it can affect your brand and then you can formulate your strategy uh, in a sentence that is clear. And then it's 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 uh, it enables like it, it's just not that uh, an idea being better. It's how you become better and edgy. And this is where we we uh, we 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 we. This is kind of how the output of the model is that if you change something here. Uh, you need these things here to have uh, your like kind of output and how it will affect. And it's not only about like uh, uh, implementing this stuff because it's fun. It will also affect your brand. It will also affect the experience of your employee. So it's easier for everybody to understand the real impact inside and outside the business using AG and to make it happen for real. So this is kind of a one way that we use it. Okay, thanks cool. for it's the whole, example. It's a whole workshop, so it's uh, just some kind of uh, the idea behind there. Mm -hmm. Matthew. Yeah, I just wanted to bounce on the idea that uh, for me, AG, the more I used it in the last year, the less it became a tool. Uh, it became really something else, you know, like uh, when you're a kid, you don't start by interacting with stuff. You start pointing stuff and you start naming them. To me, I find it very similar because when we're in organizations, we all have our concerns and et cetera, and we start a lot working together without really understanding each other. This is really taking a step back to look at the level of maturity and the enterprise scan is really in, uh, in good fashion of this principle. And honestly, uh, what is really surprising me is what it brings is not necessarily answers, it brings clarity because we're over just giving outputs. We're about connecting all the different things that will lead to outputs. And sometimes ESG, uh, as the way we understand it and people talk about it, it's always output based. I like the fact that Edgy is looking at the activities and everything that will produce the output as well. And I'm going to give you a very quick example, but a very uh, telling one. There is a, a group of people that have been um, uh, counseling, you could say, since November. And we've been doing a lot of workshops and a lot of things that are always are about edgy, but different angles. And last week, he just told me, oh, by the way, uh, I renovated my website, my website page. You know, I had that uh, seller, buyer, and partner page. I created the territory page because this and this and all the conversations we had and it just inspired me and it gave me clarity to build that page. And he showed me the page and I was like, wait, are you saying that you just created a new main page for your website just out of what we were discussing because it gave you clarity? And to me, that's a very telling example of the power of this because we didn't think or talk about creating a website, creating a, a new way of communication, et cetera. It just happened very organically uh, with those clients of mine. And, you know, like it could have been easy. I do have also like a, Eric and Joseph, I think kind of a digital past would have been easy to just them for hire me to say, hey, we need a better website. We need this and that, that. No, we didn't go there at all. We look at everything that connects all the parts. And then when everything felt connected for the client, and it felt purposeful, then it just sparked in him uh, a reflex of building that web page. And I think that's the best way to describe it. It just unlocks things in your brain or in other people's brain, and we understand it from the same way, or we can explore different perception of that language, but at the end of the day, it brings clarity first and foremost, uh, much more than answers. Sometimes the answers are already into People, it's just a matter of bringing clarity and bringing um, meaning uh, meaning to those language and all those different challenges. So yeah, for me, that's really the biggest uh, learning so far in one year. Cool, thank you, Matthew, and uh, for the for everybody else. Uh, just so you know, Matthew will be hosting a a, 
a campfire session next month. So if you want to hear more about what he's been doing with Nachi, then uh, please follow us on, on, on Slack and, and LinkedIn and, and when we when we post on that uh, in a couple of weeks. Um, but just to, 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 to look into this now that we're closing to the end of the, of the session, um, to take a little, little bit look into the future. Uh, to you, Milan and, and Wolfgang. Uh, well, now, Intersection, being a, a non-profit organization, largely reliant on the voluntary contribution of uh, its members, well, uh, it, it is always difficult to set clear expectations. I mean, setting clear goals and expecting people to actually reach them when they're actually doing things. Uh, a lot of the things they're doing is, is, is voluntary and, and they're being done in the free time. But uh, with a little bit of optimism and, of, of course, a sprinkle of, of, of realism, um, let's go one year in the future. What, uh, again, we are meeting, but this time it's a second anniversary of Edgy. So it's one year in the future now. It's, uh, it's uh, April or end of March or beginning of April next year, 2025. What is it that you think or would like to have happened that uh, you are probably telling us about and at, at this actually second anniversary, what what would you like to see uh, be talking about then? There's there's one thing we won't reveal today because we want to reveal it in Rome. So there will be, I think, a paradigm shifting revelation in Rome. So just to keep you curious, Steve mm -hmm. Jobs also. Uh, so the, 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 there may be something big in Rome. So I can't say more than that. Um, but what we are working on today is maybe something smaller, is working on more services, which means um, how can we better support the journey of somebody who is a prospective and somebody who's curious to, and then he downloads edgy, he or she downloads edgy, and how can we help this journey until um, road adoption. Yeah, so what we want to see, we have 800 edgy downloads and we want to have more people in our training maybe as a next step. We have this one and only product. Yeah, it's, it's our flagship product is this edgy language foundation. And we are working on more courses or more maybe mentoring, offering services. Um, so what's happening until September probably will also be a bit of a relaunch of the web page to better present our offerings and better support the tasks of our community based on the existing AG23. Um, that has one reason is um, we need to increase our income. So that's just a pragmatic uh, necess necessity, uh, of course. So that's one reason we need to make a bit more money to become a major organization. So we need more and better offerings. That's one thing. And the other thing is we need to, I we believe we need to, to do something as an association to foster adoption. Uh, we have some adoption. We need more chapters. We need to invest more in more local communities. We want to have more people in our trainings, then we have more money, then we can spend more energy in better products and so on. So there's a lot of work to better uh, take advantage of the existing edge. So that's what I expect in the next year. And I hope to see more local chapters. They are super important for us uh, to spread the word, to grow the community, and we, we will continue this work. So that's maybe more the operational and boring stuff, but I think there will be some ex exciting stuff in, in home. Oh, Milan. Yeah, yeah. I hope we won't only tell you in one year about stuff that we are doing. <laughs> uh, I think um, what I would like to see, and you know, I, as as all humans, I cannot remember the future. But uh, what I would like to uh, tell you in in one year um, is when a question comes like today, hmm, how do we? address a, a challenge like sustainability or social responsibility with edgy, we can be like, oh, no. talk to those six people, watch that video, read this blog post. They did it and they used edgy. And um, uh, if someone says, okay, I I have this, uh, I don't know, this some, if, if we talk about a tool uh, that is positioned there last uh, year in Vienna, we had, um, a workshop on the donut as a model, uh, donut economics. So next year, I would like to see, and that comes back to what Wolfgang said about um, making it a platform, right? 
yeah so here's how you do how you translate a for example a donut model for a sector or even for an enterprise even though there's some discussion in that community whether that makes sense but this is how you connect this thinking to enterprise change using LG. Um, so I, I would hope to see um, an exponential curve of adoption in the sense that we, we just collect way more ways to use LG for whatever um, is, is on in your environment, in your context, whatever your stakeholders, your clients, your bosses want you to think about. Um, and then also to use, like to uh, collect how people then use edgy to maybe nudge these people to go beyond, right? No, it's not just a new product. It's also that. It's also, it's not just redesigning the process. It's not just um, looking at the immediate challenge and the immediate answer because we are, we are dealing with these complex systems, right? Enterprises are these systems and edgy is one way to deal with them. Um, yeah, so I will be really happy in a year when I when when we can be like that. <laughs> like, okay, this is where you. I mean, we are already halfway there, I think, because but a lot of it is still hidden, and uh, so one main task of uh, all the um, productization efforts that uh, Wolfgang mentioned is also to just enable people to be visible and to connect to each other and to uh, inspire each other. Cool. Thank you very much for that, guys. Um, we have about four minutes left, and uh, I, I, we, I know a couple of you have a hard stop in in four minutes, so I'm, I'm not trying not to go over the time. But one thing I, I do want to ask for from uh, everybody joining here, and and definitely in the community, and anybody who's who, who will watch this at a late date, um, if you can, if you have ideas that uh, of of how we that are leading this initiative in, with, with intersection, uh, what we can possibly do to, to better uh, incorporate the, the incredible power and knowledge and competence that we have in the community in a better way. Because I definitely know, I, I do know that uh, we have not been really fantastic in the last year of actually uh, harnessing this, this competence that exists in the community. So uh, if you have ideas of how we can actually do that, then uh, please reach out to us either in Slack or in LinkedIn uh, directly or in one of the channels, uh, any way that uh, don't, don't hesitate to reach out. And uh, also, of course, if you have uh, any uh, examples of using Edgy, then please let us know because we want to go, we, we want to communicate that we want to hear about it. And we want to be able to share with share it with uh, everybody else so that uh, people can learn from it. Just like Milan said, that uh, we we don't want to point at what we are doing. We want to put point at what you guys are doing with with Achi and all the great stuff that uh, are coming from uh, the community and how you're working with it and uh, show that to people and give that as examples on on how to start, how to work with it, and how to how to communicate. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. One year is pretty good. Uh, we have to think about, uh, as a child, one year is you, you started babbling, you possibly started walking. So we have to give it a, 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 a be a little bit realistic of, of how, how much we can accomplish within the first year. But I, I have to say, I'm, I'm really proud of what uh, has happened and what's happened in the last year. And uh, I'm absolutely certain that uh, in the next year, we will not only be walking, we will definitely starting to run and uh, we will be starting to babble a lot more and talking about things and using this language in, a, in multiple different scenarios and contexts and ways. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what we have in a year. Thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. Looking forward to see you again. Thanks, everyone, for joining. And thanks, Helgi, for, for doing this. Absolutely. My pleasure. <laughs> See you guys. Bye-bye. Have a nice evening. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Good evening. Bye.